Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And I know that you guys know I'm at SHOT Show this week, and we have put together a compilation video. We've never done one of these before, but I wanted to come out here with some video ready for you guys. We, did, we collected my personal favorite of the Steve Dettelbox, the director of the ATF's just openly embarrassing things of 2023, for review, for reminder, but also to show you how... We've got it in a record that they can't do what they want to do. Everything that I'm going to show you is not linked because it's all available on YouTube, but I hope you guys enjoy. And of course, let me know what you think in the comments below and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. And I want to know which one of these clips is your favorite Steve Dettelbach of 2023. One, two, or three. Let me know. Let's get into this, guys. There was a, there was a situation last year where Steve Dettelbach, again, the director of the ATF, got in front of Harvard and started talking to the Harvard students, the best and the brightest in our nation, right? Like they were toddlers. So it's not the episodes where he goes in front of Congress and says, I'm not a firearms expert. It's not the, I don't know these rules. None of that testimony stuff. That's just good clips. This stuff, gold. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get the first one. Let's get it. Better. Uh, uh, on identifying the drivers of violent crime, the individuals, the very few, because all the data shows is that there's, you know, this many people who commit crime, right? and a very small group of those people are shooters and trigger pullers. We have to get better, and we are getting better, at identifying those few people um, who are likely to shoot, by the way, multiple times, um, and focusing our law enforcement resources, not on the community as a whole, but on those individual folks and doing what we can to get them away from the community. Okay, hold on. I can almost hear you guys. You're like, I remember something about that. You know what else we remember? I'm just asking for a friend. I also seem to remember an entire political executive bureaucratic attack on the gun industry, on the Second Amendment supporting rights of the everyday American citizens' gun rights from the ATF. Isn't it weird that you have a clip of the sitting ATF director saying that, well, it's not all people, and it's only a subset of criminals, and it's the same people who are doing it, and it's a very small segment. Well, that's that, that sounds like arrest a criminal. That doesn't sound like infringe upon an entire nation's gun rights and try to take them away through executive fiat using something called Chevron deference, which is not congressionally passed. It's just something that's an interpretation. Does that sound like it like it jives at all? Now, of course, they're, they're trying their hardest to not affect the population as a whole, which is obviously why they did everything that I just said. Like, do you, I think they think we're dumb. I really think they think we're dumb. But that's the first one. So we're going to put that together for posterity. So remember these orders, one, two, and three. That's the first compilation uh, segment. Let's go to the next one. Again, this is all from the same freaking place. I'm so glad we caught this. Anyway, here's number two. Congress has set limits on how much data we can keep. I am the only, uh, and we can't have a firearms registry. There's a law that says ATF can't have a firearms registry. Right. So I am the only, uh, as far as I know, I'm the only uh, customer of Adobe Acrovet who we at ATF pay them extra money to remove search function from their product so that we can comply with what Congress has mandated. Uh, and so we have every time there's a, a trace run, it is done literally by a person going through either records that are scanned in, looking at them one by one. <laughs> so I put this clip in here because they're actually trying to sell you this. That, that's why I love this part. Because the whole thing here is, well, it's against law. Congress has prohibited us from having a database in a registry. Yep, that is correct. So clearly... Guys, this is the part where they start selling you. We don't have a database because databases are searchable. Now, we have a data collection, but it's not searchable because we paid Adobe Acrobat a lot of extra money to say that we want that function removed. Okay, again, <laughs> the function doesn't exist, but computers have command F. It's not too difficult. But anyway, besides that whole point, I'm sure it could never be re-enabled if just the whim of an executive, right? Come on, guys. Now, the other part here is they're actually trying to sell you on the idea that 
They have millions and millions and millions, billions of records. Well, not billions, but millions and hundreds of millions of records. And they have an individual who goes through and searches those without a database, one by one by one. And they always seem to find the search data, and it's always released within like three hours. You ever notice that? We have the luckiest little ATF gnomes ever. They just, they just, they scroll like this with their finger and they go, mm, bing, nailed it. No search function for you. That's number two. So let me know what you guys think if what he was selling was absolute crap. But now, my per this, I'm biased, my personal favorite. This is number three. And you know how I mentioned ATF little gnomes? Yeah, we're going to hear Steve Dedebach paint a picture about the ATF gnomes. Check this out. Because this, there's no reason you would do this ever. There's, I, no. It's for organizational purposes, nothing. Firearms. And, and when they go out of business, they send us the records. And they send us the records many times in paper format. And they come in in boxes, boxes and boxes, oh, millions a month of these records. And there are these people uh, who sit, in, wonderful people who sit at our facility in Martinsburg, West Virginia. And uh, they, they sit at tables. And their job is to go through these boxes and boxes, an endless number of boxes, right? There's always more boxes, right? Millions of them and take out the staples and if there's waterlogged ones, flatten them and take off the clips and separate them every day. <laughs> you guys, <coughs> forgive me. Like, there's so much in this clip. You have a sitting executive, a high, the, one, the highest one in the ATF, only second to Merrick Garland, who is the DOJ, explaining how ATF table gnomes sit there and go through boxes and boxes. I mean, like, you could, you cannot make this up. Talking to Harvard students, and they remove staples, and if they're waterlogged, they flatten them. Yeah, there's no reason they do that, right? They just like organization. Because after all, the ATF lucky little table gnomes, they just kind of scroll and just find things. There's no database, because obviously, they pay Acrobat not to do that. Now, the other thing that I really love about this clip this is someone who is interviewing from Harvard, and you can hear her in the background when he's like, all of these uh, these uh, records are paper, and she goes, yeah. Mm. Very pensive. And then he's going, we have these ATF guards the, in the never-ending land of boxes of the ATF in a mythical place called West Virginia. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> Guys, this, this stuff... The stuff that they expect us to swallow as just perfectly not normal, fine, nothing to see here, we're all good. Look, the director's telling you, is comical, and that's why I put this video together. I really hope you enjoy our SHOT Show comp compilations that we've got coming up. Let me know what you guys think of this format, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.